Hello again, this is Kurt from the Curse Plus channel here on the YouTube. I'm going to be bringing you another arcade fun video. Now, this is going to be a how-to video. Uh, this is going to be how to replace a, a uh, monitor in one of your arcade machines if it goes bad. Now, you're going to notice uh, one of the things about my arcade machines is all my arcade machines use standard, basically standard computer monitors and TVs and things like that, whatever will fit the cabinet that I need at the time. Uh, and you're gonna. This is gonna be a little video explaining to you how to go about replacing a monitor when it goes bad in your cabinet. Now, the cabinet that we're gonna be working on today is gonna be my uh, my Namco 20 year reunion cabinet in my basement arcade. Now, the monitor in this cabinet is almost 10 years old, and it's it's life it's, it's life has finally come up. Uh, it's not powering up properly anymore. I'm having a lot of problems with it, and. Uh, I checked the computer and everything out, computer and everything is A-OK, -okay, and it turns out that it is the monitor going bad. So I'm going to show you today how to go about replacing a monitor in your arcade machine. Uh, now, I think you're going to find this video is pretty helpful. Now, now, this is going to be more if you're using computer monitors and things for your arcade machines. Some people like to go with arcade monitors, so this video is going to be different uh, from, from those monitors. But this is going to show you basically if you're using a computer monitor or you're using a TV, uh, an, like an LED TV or an LCD TV and you want to replace one in your arcade machine that goes bad, this is going to show you how to go about doing that. Okay. Now, one of the first things we're going to go, go about doing is I'm going to show you how to take the bezel off the, off the uh, game uh, that I'm going to put the monitor in, how to take the monitor out. That's the first thing we're going to do. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you the machine that we're going to be working with today. Okay. Okay, make sure I got that camera angle here just right for you. Okay, yeah, what we have in front of us, this is my, this is my, my, uh, this is my Namco uh, Reunion Arcade machine uh, that I have that I custom built. This is one of the first, uh, first machines that, that I, uh, if you remember listening to what my, my arcade series said, this is one of the first machines that I, that the first one in my modern arcade that I converted. Uh, and this is basically the cabinet that basically all the other cabinets are patterned after is this one here. And the monitor's gone bad. I'm going to show you how to go about replacing it. Okay. Now, the first thing that you want to do is you want to make a determination. Of when, when you take the monitor bezel glass off right here, the bezel right here, you want to make sure that it goes back on the same way that it came off. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of tape on here and mark an arrow to show you how, the, how, it, how it goes in place. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of tape on the monitor. Now, keep in mind, this is going to vary depending on what type of monitor you have and how it's mounted. My, my bezels are basically mounted in glass channels that run across the bottom of the machine. And I'm going to show that to you when I lift it up. If you see in this video right here, right here, basically, this is how my glass, my, my bezels are mounted. There's glass, there's a channel that runs across the bottom here with a piece of steel, and then it's got brackets on both ends of it that bolt to the side of the cabinet. That's what holds the glass bezel in place. It slides into a channel, and that's where the glass bezel is held in place. So I'm going to show you how to take that out. Okay, now I'm going to basically, on, on this piece of paper tape I put in, I'm going to put an arrow for up, I'm going to put an arrow for right, and I'm going to put an arrow here for left. The reason you want to mark the bezel, there's a reason you want to mark this bezel. When you take the bezel and you put it back in the arcade machine, Sometimes you can get lucky and you'll be able to actually reuse the bezel again on the arcade machine. The reason why you want to have it marked in is so you know exactly which way it came out. So when you put it back in, it'll make it easier when you go to put it back in the machine as well. That's the reason why I have this marked like I do here. Now, one of the things you have to determine, okay? Now, in this arcade machine, I basically knew what, well, I basically knew what size monitor I was going to go with. One of the things you have to determine is you have to take measurements as to where your, where your monitor area is going to be determined the size monitor that you're going to use. I'm going to show you how that works. Now, on this arcade machine, basically, I had a 20, I have 21 inches of space to work with. Okay, so what you do is you take it from the top where the, where the, top where the monitor is going to be, all the way down to the bottom. Now, as you can see right here, I have 21 inches. From here to here is 21 inches, which means the monitor then that I have, I have to try to make sure that the monitor will basically be no will basically fit the area that I have. 
Now on these cabinets, there's a little bit of overhang up here where the monitor can go up inside. Because of the way I designed these, the monitor can be a little bit larger, but your actual viewing area is 21 inches. So if you have a frame around the monitor, that's okay if it's a little larger, as long as the actual viewing area is no more than 21 inches, which is what I have on here. Now that's going to vary depending on the size cabinet that you have. Now the other thing too to determine is, is also going to be is the width. Now you can see on my cabinets they're fairly wide, so that's really not going to be an issue. But I always take a dimension as to how wide, the, how wide the cabinet is and how much room I have to work with. Now in this case, I had 21 inches of room to work with from side to side. Now, the monitor I have is much smaller than that, so it's not going to be anywhere near that width. So I don't have to worry too much, but that's also what you want to do. And what you do then is, once you have these written down, then you write these down on a piece of paper, these measurements. And then when you go to measure your new monitor, like if you go to Best Buy, you actually take a tape measure with you. You can measure the monitors as you're going along to determine just which one will work. Now... In my arcade machines, I, I have to buy a monitor or a TV that has a monitor that has a bracket to mount it inside the cabinet. Because as you're going to see, I'm going to show you next when I turn this around how the actual monitor is mounted. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead. We're going to, going to go ahead. And we're going to remove the bezel, and I'm going to show you how that comes out. And then I'm going to show you what the monitor looks like underneath. Now on my cabinets, to remove the monitor bezels, what I do is I basically let, reach in the back and reach in the front and then I can actually lift the glass up like this and the glass actually comes out will actually lift out to a certain point now to take the monitor bezel out on this cabinet basically I just lift the glass up out of the channel put it in front of the machine and then I can actually lift the glass right out okay okay now that's the actual glass bezel I use on my cabinets. Now if you remember I told you that this is the original bezel that came with the pack with, the, with, the, with this machine. Originally this was a pack mating machine and this was converted over to a pack converted over. Originally it was a pack mating machine and converted to a molding game. So this is a really nice piece of glass and as you can see it's painted on both sides. As you can see it's painted. Now hopefully the monitor, I don't know how wide it's going to be as to how I'm going to determine it. If it's too wide I have to repaint the bezel. If not, I might be able to reuse the bezel. It just depends how it looks once I put the bezel back in place. Okay, now I'm going to show you what the monitor looks like. Okay, let me get the camera just right so you can see it. Okay, yeah, what you're seeing here now is you can actually see the Samsung monitor now that I have in here. This is a Samsung monitor that's been in this cabinet, and it's almost 10 years old. Now, the monitor I'm going to be replacing with is also a Samsung monitor as well. Now, on my cabinets, what I want to do is I'm actually going to spin, turn the cabinet around to, look, to, load the mon to, look, to, to take the monitor out. Now, you're going to notice that all my cables and things here on top, all my cables and things that are hanging down here, all my cabinets are built on wheels, so I can actually turn these cabinets around on their wheels. What you have to do on my cabinets is I have to disconnect all the computer, disconnect the computer and everything from the side. All the cables and everything that were connected, I basically just drape over the top of the cabinet like you can see here. That allows me to turn the cabinet around as I'm going to show you here. Okay. Now as you can see, I can actually turn the cabinet completely around because they're on wheels. Okay. Now you can see from this photo right here, this is basically how my monitors are mounted. As you can see, there's a beam that runs across on the inside here. There's an actual beam. The monitor, there's an actual bracket in here that mounts the monitor. This is the same bracket that you use if you mount a TV to your wall. All my cabinets use monitor brackets to hold them. And they're anchored on the cabinet from here and here, here and here, and then there's a cross member. And basically, this is just suspended inside the cabinet. Now I'm going to take the monitor out. Now what you want to do when you take the monitor out, you want to disconnect the cables that go to the monitor. Okay, as you can see I'm doing right here, I'm going to disconnect the cables that go to the back of the monitor. Now depending on what, what type of setup you have, I have a monitor cable and I have a power cable. Okay, the power cable here, the power cable came out first. And what I do then is I just put that power cable off to the side. Because a new monitor, the, the, the thing I'm going to be putting in here has its own power supply and a new, a new uh, adapter, and so I won't be using this. Now, the other thing, too, is I 
Okay, this is the other thing. The actual video cable, okay, Now, one of the things that's different on my monitor, my original monitor used cables like these. It used, to v, it used these VGA cables. This is what connected the monitor to the computer. It was connected to the monitor with these VGA cables. That's what connected it before. Not going to be using these cables anymore. I'm not going to be using the power supply cable anymore because the new monitor is actually going to be connected with, HD, with an HDMI cable. I'm going to show you what that looks like next. Okay, this is an HDMI cable. This is basically, this is a cable right here. This is what the new cabinet is going to be using. These are HDMI cables. The new cabinet will actually mount to the computer through an HDMI cable. The new monitor will mount to, a, to the computer through an HDMI cable. Now, if you remember I told you that I upgraded all my computers with graphics cards. Well, the updated gra graphics card on my computer has an output for an HDMI cable. So that's what's going to be going to this new monitor is one of these HDMI cables. So that's going to be attached later. Okay. Now on my monitors, what I do on the back is, on the back of the monitor, there's a little pin that slides across and it gets released. Okay. Sometimes it takes a little bit of finesse to get these pins out. I'm going to go and get that out now. Okay, this is the bracket that basically holds the monitor, the bracket in place. This holds the monitor in place on the bracket it's sitting on. So this comes out first. Now I go ahead now and I turn the cabinet back around to the front. Okay, and now what I can do now is I can actually lift the monitor out as you're going to see I'm going to do here. As you can see, I took the monitor out. Now you're going to notice on the back of the monitor, this is that bracket I was telling you about. There's a bracket on the back of the monitor. Now, this bracket is going to be used when I connect it to the, to the new monitor. This is going to be reused, this bracket. So I'm going to be taking this out and attaching this to the new monitor. Uh, but I had to take a few measurements first to, determine, to make sure everything's going to work fine. Okay. Now I'm going to show you what the new monitor looks like that's going to go in to replace it. The monitor that I'm going to use to replace this, this is a Samsung 24-inch uh, monitor, and this uh, a TV monitor that will work just fine for this using the HDMI input from the computer to power the monitor. Now, you're going to notice that that uh, it's also a Samsung, which I try to stick with. Now, what I did is I actually went to Best Buy and I measured this to get the one that would work best for my cabinet. Okay, and this, this is the actual monitor here that I have here. This is the actual monitor that we're going to be replacing in the cabinet. Now, what I want to do in here is I basically want to go, go to the cabinet. Okay. I'm going to basically put the monitor inside the cabinet like this. I'm going to set it down flat. I'm going to make sure that I can see the monitor from all angles. Now, as you can see here, I can see the cabinet fine. Oh, the monitor, everything fits perfectly inside here. It's, it clears the top. It's good. The, the top of the monitor is here. I can see the picture here just fine, and it clears the bottom just fine. That's one of the number one things you have to determine is, is it going to clear everything when you put it in there. And as you can see, it's going to do that. Now, one of the next things I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take that monitor bracket that I have, and I'm going to transfer the monitor bracket. Now that I know, now that, I know that everything will fit, now that I made a determination that the monitor is going to fit, I'm going to go to that monitor bracket that I had, and I'm actually going to take the monitor bracket off the other, off the other monitor, I'm it on the back of this monitor, and I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Okay, we're going to go back to the table. We'll go back to the table so I can show you how we do that. Okay, let me clear my stuff off the table here.
Okay, one of the things you have to do when you're mounting the monitor in here, you have to determine... Okay, one of the things you have to determine when you're mounting the mounting bracket in here is the mounting bracket is going to basically attach where these four screws are, where these four holes are. That's where the mounting bracket is going to attach. The HDMI cables, ca cables are going to attach in here. Now, what you have to determine is when you're putting this in, which way is going to be up, which, which direction is going to be up on your monitor. It doesn't necessarily matter so much this way, but what matters is when you're mounting it on the back, when you mount that monitor bracket on there, on the back of this, you want to try to have as short as run as possible from the monitor down to your computer. So I'm going to probably end up mounting the, mo mounting the monitor bracket just like this. I'm going to have the mon monitor bracket mounted just like this, so when the monitor goes in the computer, it'll set down like this inside the bracket. And I'm going to show you exactly what that bracket looks like once I, once I take it apart. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and attach the monitor bracket to the back of this. Okay, that's going to be the next thing I'm going to do. Now something I'm going to do on this is actually now that I know the orientation, now that I know which way the monitor is going to mount, I'm going to actually put a piece of tape on here on the top. And right top, I'm going to go ahead and write top on here. As you can see, I wrote top on here. And also, I put, as you see here, I wrote top. I'll see if I can show this to you in the photos here. Okay, let me adjust the camera just a little bit. Okay, yeah, as you're going to see, I wrote top on here. And now I know, now I know which way the monitor is going up because when I mount the monitor bracket, you want to have the monitor bracket so when the monitor is sitting in here, that's how the bracket's mounted, the orientation of the bracket. That's the reason why you always mark top so you know which direction. So this is going to be the top of the monitor. This is the top of the cabinet. The power supply comes in here. That goes to the power strip in the back. This is going to be where the HDMI cable attaches right in here. As you can see here, that's how we're going to, that's how we're going to mount the bracket. Now I'm going to go ahead now and, and take the bracket off the old monitor and mount it in a new one. And I'm going to show you how we do that. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take the bracket off the monitor. Now, what you also want to do is on the old monitor, okay, now the old monitor, this was, the, this was up. The position on the monitor, when I had it in place, this was the top of the monitor here. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on this. I'm going to mark it on here, just like I did with the other one. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark top on top. Okay, just like that. Now, something else you're going to do, because I want it, now, now that I know that this is the top, I want the monitor bracket to be mounted exactly the way it was in the cabinet before, and that's what I'm going to do now. I'm actually going to go ahead and mark it on here as well. As we're going to see now, I'm going to also write top on here. Then I'm also going to put arrows on here. Okay. Now the reason why you mark on the bracket is when I take the bracket from this monitor and I mount it on the other, other monitor, I'll know that everything's in the right orientation. Now what we do is we go ahead and we take these screws off. Now the thing to keep in mind is depending on the size monitor you have, the bracket's going to vary depending on the size monitor that you have. Now, what I'm using right now is I'm using a Dynex bracket that's designed for TVs 24 to 35 inches. That's what this, this bracket's designed for. You need to make sure when you're, when you're buying a bracket, 
you need to make sure that you check to make sure the weight of the bracket that you have is going to hold support the weight of the TV that you have. The heavier monitor, you're going to need a larger bracket, but it actually will tell you how much mo how much weight the bracket will hold. That's when when you buy the bracket, it'll tell you on there how much mo how much uh, weight the bracket the bracket will hold. Now, for example, if you check out my uh, my Hyperspin pinball cabinet, that required a much larger bracket because it was a big TV on the bottom, so it was a much larger bracket than this one here. But because these are mostly 21, 23, 24 inch monitors in my cabinet, I don't usually have to have anything too beefy, and this usually does the job just fine. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the bracket out. Okay, you do that using using a using a Phillips head screwdriver. Then you set the bolts and things right on the side. Okay, now as you can see, I got this. I got the hardware out. Now I can take the bracket off. Now the one thing to make sure, one thing very important to determine is when you buy a. Uh, go ahead and show you on the camera here. When you buy one of these monitor bra bra brackets, this is what a mo the monitor bracket looks like. It looks just like this. It's a little metal bracket and it's, it's got a thing on the top. This channel right here. This is what engages into the bracket that's in that. It, there's another bracket inside the cabinet that's mounted on that wood beam. That's what engages in here, and I'm going to show you what that looks like when, uh, as well. Okay. Now, one thing very important to keep in mind is when you buy these, uh, when you buy these uh, brackets and hardware and things that goes to mount these TVs and things, they actually come with screws and bolts like these things that come along with them, screws and washers. It's very important that you use the hardware that comes along with the with the actual uh, bracket itself. Reason being is these are actually designed not to go too deep into the TV. However, when you screw them in the bracket, this is designed so they won't go too deep in and damage any components inside the TV. However, I always, as a safeguard, I always like to go ahead. I'm going to show you what I like to do just to be, just to be safe. Okay. When I have the TV here in front of me, I always take the brackets like this. I put them in here like this in the holes where they're going to mount. What I do is I screw them in like this. Gently checking them to make sure that there's nothing that's going to be hitting in here. Now, as you can see, this is fine. There's nothing hitting it. I don't have any resistance, so this is fine. But you always want to check that because you don't want to ever have a situation where you put a screw in and it pierces something inside the monitor, inside the monitor or the TV that you're not aware of. But that's why if you stick with the hardware that comes with the mounting brackets, I've never had a problem with any of these things hitting any of the components with these monitor brackets because when the manufacturers make the TVs, they're assuming that you're gonna, you might want to mount this on the wall. So normally they, the, normally they make the mounting brackets and stuff so they'll work with the TV and not damage any components inside. But it's still a good idea just to be on the safe foot. Just go ahead and put those screws in one by one, just using your hand, just like this, and just make sure that you don't have any resistance on any of the holes when you put them in there to avoid damaging your monitor. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and mount the bracket now on the new monitor. So I'm going to take the old monitor. Now that the old monitor is out of the way, we're going to take this out of the way and we're going to go ahead and mount the hardware to the new monitor. Okay, as you can see now, I have the new monitor in front of me. And remember, I marked on here which direction the top is. See, and that's why I marked it. Now that I know which direction the top is, I now know which direction the monitor mounts. And as you can see, I marked on the monitor. I marked top as well, so I know which way it came off the old monitor. That's the reason why you mark on tape and with pen exactly how the bracket came off the monitor. Now what I do is I set the bracket on the TV so it matches up with the holes. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm still going to I'm going to go ahead I'm going to check the monitor just like any other to make sure that the screws and things are going to be okay and they're not going to cause any problems. So that one's good. And you just do this on each one. You go through each hole and check it just to be sure. That's 
Good. That one's good. I got one more to check. Okay, I'm going to check and see. More to check. Okay, and that one's good too. Okay, so now I know that all the screws and everything are clearing, and I can go ahead and now mount the bracket. Okay, now I take the bracket as I had it oriented, with the, with the top, facing top, this is up, and then I just lay this down on the TV, uh, or uh, I, on the TV to mount. Now, as you can see in the back here, this is what it looks like when you mount it. The monitor's right here. And then the bracket goes in place like this, and then you line up these four holes to go along with the bracket, and then you put the screws in, and that's what attaches the monitor, and this is what holds the monitor in place. Okay, we're going to go ahead and we're going to attach the hardware now that holds the monitor and holds the bracket in place. And also, when you tighten down the holes, now something else you're going to want to do, I'm going to show you next too. You tighten them down so they're tight, but you don't want to over tighten the screws. You tighten them down so they're tight, but don't over tighten them either. Fourth one goes right in here. Okay, now what I do now is I go ahead now, I have the bracket in place. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to snug the screws up just a little bit just to make sure they're tight. Remember, don't remember. When you're tightening these screws in the back of these monitors, you want to be very, or, or, or TV or monitor, whatever you're using, you want to make sure these brackets, when you tighten these down, these brackets that you don't over tighten the screws. They don't need to be super duper tight. I put a little lock nut on each one of these as well, just to make sure it doesn't come loose. But you don't need to make, just make sure they're tight, but don't over tighten them, because you run a risk of stripping the screw, you run a risk of stripping, stripping the threads out, out of the uh, brackets behind the TV that mounts it or the monitor. So you want to make sure you don't over tighten them. Tight, 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 
tight. Tight. Okay, now basically now the bracket is mounted now. And as you can see, I have the orientation up, up, and up. This is top up. This is top up. So now I know the bracket's mounted properly. So when I put this in the cabinet, I know this is going to sit in there properly. Now, the one thing you have to be in mind is when you mount a bracket, if you're mounting the monitor, because of the fact I'm mounting the monitor this way here, I'm mounting the monitor up and down, not, not left to right. I'm actually going to mount it up and down. I do this because when I play games like Pac-Man things, I like to have the full screen for those things. Qbert, Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man. I like to have the whole screen uh, just like the arcade machine is. Now, this is going to depend on the arcade machine that you're mounting your monitor. I like to have it so it's, it's mounted just like a Pac-Man machine or Miss Pac-Man with, 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 with the long side down and the short sides across. Okay. Now, you also come out the bracket this way as well. Uh, the only difference is the bracket's mounted differently. Now, the thing to keep in mind is if you mount the bracket like this, the one thing that can happen is sometimes you need to make sure that the bracket in the back clears any cables that you're going to have going in. I, I had a situation on one where I actually had a bracket that was blocking these because I had the connections in here and it was actually blocking these and I had, had to modify the bracket. So always make sure that everything's clearing behind here when you put these in there, that everything is clear and that you can get access to all your cables and your power supply and everything without having the bracket be in the way, which is what I just did here. Okay, now everything's tightened up. Okay. Now I'm going to show you what, what, where, this, where this attaches to the cabinet on the back. Okay, I'm going, to re I'm going to turn everything around here, back, back towards the arcade machine. Okay, now as you, as you remember, I was telling you that there's a bracket that's inside the arcade machine, okay? This is that bracket right here. Now, as you can see, this bracket right here, as you can see, there's an orientation. This is the bracket right here where that bracket basically mounts in. The bracket mounts into these hooks right here. And what it is, is there's actual hooks right here on the bracket. That's how the monitor mounts. Now, it may or may not match up when I put it in. I may have to modify the monitor bracket, or I may have to move it left to right or up or down, depending how the monitor's going to sit in. That's the thing you do next. You just kind of get an idea of how the bracket's going to sit in there by putting the monitor in and just doing a test fit just to see how it looks. Now, keep in mind, if you, if you have a monitor, if, when you're buying a monitor, you can actually buy, two, if, for example, if, if you want to buy two monitors and have a backup monitor, then it's just a matter of swapping the monitors out. Then everything will fit perfectly. Now, in this situation, I didn't have a backup monitor for this cabinet, so I had to get a new, a new monitor, and I'm not sure if it's going to line up or not with, line up or not with a bracket, but that's what we're going to check next. All right, now the way you test that is, you take your, take your monitor in the direction that you had with your up here, your top here, up here, top here, and it's going to mount in that bracket in the back. Now, sometimes you have to get in an angle to check this. You have to get in an angle. Okay. Okay, now what you're going to notice is, when I put the bracket in here, you notice how the TV's not centered up with the centered up with the cabinet. What I have to do is I have to remount the bracket because of the fact. What happens is, on the back of the TV, the bracket that actually holds the monitor in place, it's in a different spot. Depending on if it's if it's in the middle or if it's in the center. The bracket can go left or right either direction. Now, in this case, the, the, the monitor that it had on it was basically, if you look in here, 
The monitor bracket was but was 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 aimed for the other monitor. The monitor bracket fit the other monitor. Now the other other monitor was perfectly centered. This monitor is not, so this bracket's going to have to be moved over and it's going to have to be redrilled and recentered. I want to show you how to do that next. Okay, now as you can see, I'm going to put it in one more time so you can see what I was what I'm talking about. Okay. So as you can see here, the monitor bracket now has to be modified because it doesn't fit. So I have to make, move the monitor bracket over on the plate in the back, and that's what I'm going to do next. Okay? Now I'm going to show you how that, how that comes out and how we go about adjusting that as well. Okay. Now what you want to do to mount the monitor bracket is the same thing I had before when I marked on the first one. You're going to do the same thing when you take this monitor bracket at this inside here. This, this piece that holds the monitor bracket. You're going to go ahead and mark it with a piece of tape. Piece of tape on the bracket, on the monitor, uh, the, the support for the monitor bracket. You also put a piece on the bracket itself. And you're going to do the same thing I did with the other thing. You're going to mark the orientation of how this is inside the cabinet. Now the reason why you take time to mark this is because when you put this back in the cabinet, when I take this apart to, to, to reorganize the bracket, I want to make sure everything goes in exactly the way it came out. So that's why I mark on here. I mark. I put an up arrow on here. I put a. I put a right here, a left here, and a top here. I do the same thing on the bracket. Put top on here, right on here, left on here, and then up on here. That makes sure that when I when I take the bracket off, I know how everything goes back on exactly the same way that it came up. It's also important to note that. I know that the clearances on the up and down were fine because I checked the clearances to make sure the monitor was fitting. If you look at the bracket right here where the bottom is, this is the bottom and then this is the top. I made sure that the monitor fit in between here. I'm going to show you one more time before, before we do the next part. Let me get the camera just right for you so you can see that. time just to show that to you. Okay. This is what I was telling you about. Now, Okay, yeah. Based on where the monitor's at, inside the cabinet, I'm not going to have any problems mounting this monitor because as you can see inside here, if you look at the bottom, the bottom and everything is fine and it's clearing down here just fine. You make sure that the monitor clears the bottom and you also make sure it clears the top while it's sitting on the base inside. Now, if it turns out when you, if it turns out when you mount the monitor that it's not fitting, for example, if it's sitting up or it won't go all the way down, then you have to, re, then you have to reposition your brace up or down. In this case, it's going to be just fine. I don't have any problem. All I need to do now is just move it left to right uh, by, by moving that monitor bracket. And that's what I'm going to go ahead and do next. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the monitor bracket out. And I'm going to show you how, how, how to fix that. Okay.
Now, on my arcade cabinets, what I do to mount the brackets is on either side of the cabinet, these cabinets actually have a bolt that holds this in place. All I do is I just take, I take, a, take a bolt driver and loosen the cabinet up, okay? By loosening this up, then there's bolts that hold this in place, and then I can take this out. Now, I'm going to take a break, a break away from doing this because, to, because this is going to take me uh, about 10 minutes to do this to get the bracket and everything out. But then I'm going to go ahead and show you then how I go about, go about repositioning the uh, bracket and everything in place as well. Once I go to center, I'm going to show that to you as well. Okay, I'll be back shortly. Hey, this is Kurt again from the Kurt's Place channel here. Uh, yeah, I'm back to show you another, uh, 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 the, uh, the, uh, what the actual bracket and everything looks like once it's mounted properly with the monitor. Now, if you remember I told you before I had to, I had to move the monitor bracket to the left or right to adjust for the, where it was at in the cabinet. And I'm going to show you exactly how I did that. Okay. Okay, what you can see in front of you, this is the actual monitor, monitor bracket here. Okay. I'm going to try to get you a good angle to show you exactly how I did, how I did this. Okay. Okay, now if you look on the bracket, this is what the bracket looks like when it's mounted inside the machine. I'm going to lift this up for it. This is basically how it mounts inside the machine. Just like that. Okay. Now what I had to determine was when I did this is I had to make sure that the distance from the monitor, from the monitor glass to here, and from the monitor edge to here. This is the actual screen part from here to here, and from here to here were the same on both sides. What I did is I used a, I used a square. I used one of these right here. This is this is a, this is called a, they call this a square ruler. Or various, there's other names for it too, but basically I call, I call this a squaring ruler. That's what I call this. What I did is I made sure, now if you notice here, when you, see, when you see when this is in place, notice that it's even from here to here, it's even. And then you just go to the other side and do the same thing from the other side. So you'll see in the picture here. Notice from here, from here to the monitor's edge is even. This is the side of the cabinet, so from here to the, to the center of the monitor is even. Same thing on the other side. From here to the center of the monitor is even. You're measuring, when you measure, the, when you square the monitor, you're not squaring the monitor up from this part. You're squaring it up from the, where the actual glass part that shows you the picture is, which is right here. So you're going to see here, I uh, should give it a little bit more of a close-up so you can see what it looks like. Okay, you'll see here. When I put this on the edge, that, remember this is the side of the cabinet. The edge of the square is right here, which is where the screen is. Notice the edge of the square is right where the screen is, right there. When I do the same thing on the other side, you'll see the same thing applies. Edge of the cabinet to the center of the screen, right where the screen is. That's how you determine the center point of that bracket on the back. And then basically I just move the bracket back and forth. And then I just drill in the holes to mount the bracket. Okay. Now the way the, the way the monitor is held in place is, if you can see in this picture right here, on the back of the monitor, in the back here, where, the, where the, this is where the monitor, where the bracket goes inside the cabinet, there's a little bar inside here that slides back and forth. What it does is this little bar pulls out. Then you can actually lift the monitor out. And this is what it looks like. These are what the engaging pins look like. You can see here in this photo right here, it's a little hard to see at the angle I'm at, and I think you can see that reasonably well. Yeah, you'll notice in here that there's little pins in here. There's like little indentations in here. This is that's what the actual bracket goes into. These little indentations, and then on the back of the monitor they line up. So when you put it in place, it goes like this. Then that goes in like that, and then this goes in here. Like that, and that locks your monitor in place. That's how the monitors are like in place. So that's basically how I mount the monitors in the cabinets, is using that little clip. Okay. Now I'm going to actually go ahead. I'm going to go ahead now, and I'm going to take another little break, and I'm actually going to mount the bracket back inside the mount that that uh, the the monitor support uh, piece that goes into that brace with the bracket on in the cabinet. Then show what it looks like with the, with with the monitor in this new location. Be right back. 
Hello, this is Craig, and I want to welcome you back to the uh, monitor install video. I now went ahead and I mounted the monitor bracket inside the cabinet. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Okay. As you can see now, the monitor, as you can see now, the bracket's been remounted inside the cabinet, as you can see. The bra that, this is the uh, piece that the frame I showed you about. Remember I told you there was a, there was a piece in there that holds the bracket? This is the brace that holds the bracket. It runs from side to side on the cabinet. It's anchored on both sides. This is the bracket that I, that I put back in place. Now you're going to notice the original bracket was here, and it moved over here about about two about about an inch or so. It moved about about, eh, about probably about an inch and a half inch and a half to two inches this way. And now this is the new location. Now we're going to put the monitor in and see how it, how it all fits together. Okay, now as you're going to see here, I'm going to set the monitor in here. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the back and I'm going to lift the monitor up. I'm going to put it inside its bracket. Set the bracket down gently. And now what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to check for clearance. What I'm looking for in the cabinet is I'm looking to make sure I have clearance where the bottom of the cabinet is and I do. As you can see, the it can move inside. There's clearance under here now. There's clearance in here. So now there's room for the glass to slide here and here. Now the glass can fit up inside here now. And as you can see, I also marked top on the monitor as well so I know what the top is. Now this is the bottom of the monitor. Now as you can see, that it, it's, there's plenty of room here. It's not too tight. And as you're going to see now, the monitor is, is equal distance. The, the, the part that you view is equal distance on both sides. Here to here, and here to here, and here to here now. It's equal distance. Now you can also double check that if you want by using a square. Now as you can see, when I use a square, I can basically judge just by adjusting this. This is adjustable. So I can actually take it like this and hold it like that and adjust it like that. Now you can see, if you look at the monitor, from the side of the cabinet to the center of the monitor where your viewing area is, that's centered. Same thing here, from the side of the monitor to the viewing area, over here that's centered. So as you can see, everything, everything now is centered. Now the next thing you do is, you go ahead and you place the monitor uh, bezel on to see how the monitor bezel looks. That's going to be the next thing. But before we do that, we have to secure the monitor. And what we're going to do is we're going to use that, that pin that I showed you, that, that black pin that I showed you, to secure the back of the monitor. This is that piece I showed you that secures the back of the monitor, so we're going to do that next. Now from the back of the cabinet, you're going to see this bracket here it goes in the back. It locks into the back, and that's how we secure the monitor. Now the monitor is secured. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in the monitor, we're going to put in the bezel glass and see how, what the bezel looks like. Now you remember how, remember how I showed you what the bezel glass looked like? You remember how we, uh, remember when we did the bezel glass, how we marked here what, what was left and what was right? That's why it's important, we want this to go on exactly the way it came out. So as you're going to see, Put it in, and I'm going to go behind here to gently move the glass in, and then set it down, and then, and then it's going to drop in place. Okay, now as you're going to see, now the glass is in place. Okay, now I'm going to double check that channel there just to be sure. By lifting it up, pushing it back down. As you can see, you have to move it back and forth once or twice. Now the glass is now the glass is positioned and it's in it's in place. Now what I do now is I'm going to check the monitor. Now, as you can see where the monitor now is, you can see you can see the edge of the monitor here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and, and paint this black now. 
to basically go ahead and even this up with a monitor, and that's the next thing I'm going to do. Okay, going to go ahead and I'm going to paint the bezel to go ahead and fit the monitor, because if you look at the monitor, this monitor here is a little narrower. The other one, the other, the bezel ends right here on this cabinet right here. This is where the bezel ends, but you can actually see that the monitor is actually in here where the glass is, so I'm going to go ahead and paint the bezel. A little bit more paint on this side, a little bit more paint on this side, and that will allow it to, to, to put everything in. The top is fine and the bottom is fine. Those don't need to be repainted, just the sides. Just this side and this side here. And that's going to be the next thing I'm going to do. And then I'm going to show what it looks like after I paint the bezel. I'll show you that when I get the bezel completed. Catch you next time. Hello again, this is Kurt from the Kurt's Place channel. Uh, this is going to be the, the uh, final part of the video now. Uh, I've now got the cabinet ready to, to, to go. If you remember it before, I, ha I had to repaint the monitor bezel to fit the uh, monitor. I now have the monitor bezel repainted. Now there's one thing I left it that I had to do I wanted to show you. If you notice in the back of the cabinet here in the picture that I have, if you remember I showed you where the monitor brackets mounted. Now, one of the things I had to do was my monitor had to come out just a little bit more. So let me show you what this looked like. Okay. When I had the monitor inside the cabinet, everything inside the cabinet was working fine. But I, but I had to pull it out just a little bit more. So what I did to bring the monitor out, I had the monitor organized properly this way and this way. This way was fine. I had it centered up. The bracket was centered. So it worked fine with the monitor. Now, I had the monitor center, but what I had to do is I had to bring the monitor out just a little bit out this way. So what I did to bring the monitor out this way, a little bit this way, I ended up putting a couple uh, metal washer spacers on here on the back of this. So there's actually some metal spacers. What that does is it brings the bracket, it brings the bracket out a little bit. As a result of the bracket coming out a little bit, it pushes the monitor out a little bit and it gets it more flush with the glass. I had about this much room between the glass and the and the, uh, and the and the monitor. By putting in the spacers, basically by pushing the monitor out towards the outside of the cabinet, it may, it reduced it to this. It got it right to the area where I want it to be. So now the glass is nice and flush now with the monitor. And now you're going to see, I'm actually going to put the monitor back in and show you what it looks like when it's completed. Okay, now before you put the monitor back in, you want to go ahead and take off all those little pieces of tape that you had. You want to go ahead and take those take those little pieces of tape off that you had. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the monitor inside the cabinet and show you what the finished product looks like. Okay, all the tapes were taken off. Now I'm going to put the monitor back in. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to install this pin here. We're going to go ahead and install this pin now in the back of the monitor, and that secures the monitor in place. Okay, this is what I was telling you about the monitor in the front. Let me show this to you too. So if you remember, I was showing you the monitor, how, how it was working out. Basically, the glass, the glass in the monitor sits in the channel right here where these, little, where these little cleats are. They're like little cleats. This is where the glass resides. I wanted to make sure that I had the gap between the glass and the monitor closer. 
So I put that spacer in those spacers in the back and I brought the monitor out. Now the monitor is nice and flush now with the glass as you can see here. And it's nice and flush. You want to try to have the monitor, as you can see I'm checking all the corners here. You want to try to have the monitor as flush as you can with the glass. It makes it, if you can get the monitor closer to the glass, it just makes it look a little more professional too when you, when you get done. So that's why you have to adjust those washers back and forth to move the monitor in and out based on how deep, how far and how far it has to come to get near the glass. And you just do that with those washers. Now I'm going to show you the washers. I actually bought washers just like these. These are the washers that I used. They're just like these. And what I do is I just stack a number of them. Depending how far out the monitor has to come, I can just stack them. They're, they come one like this. And then I can just basically, I can just stack them. Like if I need one, or if I need two, or I need three, however many I need, then I just stack them together. Okay? Put them behind the monitor bracket and pull the monitor bracket out to the point where it's flush with the glass. When the monitor itself is flush with the glass. Okay? Now the last thing to do now is to go ahead and wipe off the monitor and install the bezel and we'll, and we'll, and we'll be completed with the project. Okay. I have some screen cleaner here that I use. This is a cleaner that I use to clean TVs and things. You can get it, you can get it at, at a Best Buy and places. This is just used just to clean the screen off. Make sure everything's nice and clean. Okay. Now the last thing I do now is I install the, install the bezel glass. Now as you can see the bezel glass, if you remember I told you I had painted the bezel glass. As you can see now, this has now been repainted now. Now the, be now the bezel glass, now instead of, instead of being clear here now, it's been painted here. So now this has been brought in and painted on both sides. Now the monitor bezel now will better fit the monitor now and you won't have gaps between the sides as you're going to see next. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and install the glass now for you. Hold one second. Got one little spot here. I need to get on the monitor. One second. I'm going to be back in one second. I just have to get some additional cleaner for the monitor. I'll be right back. Okay, I got back. I'm going to go ahead now. I have the monitor all cleaned up. And I'm going to go ahead and put the glass in place and show you what it looks like with the bezel in place. sit down in the channel. Okay, and the last thing we do now is we just take the uh, just take the tape off the uh, monitor. Okay, go ahead and wipe down the bezel glass. Okay, now as you can see, now the bezel, the bezel glass is now complete. As you can see, now we have a new monitor. Everything's lined up properly now. Everything looks good. 
We now have a new monitor in our cabin. That's how you install an arc a monitor in your arcade machine.